this tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hello friends, Romans and countrymen, lend me your ears. We're talking about time today. This is the Bifrost Graph Editor and this is the Time Node. It's a magic node because it does nothing else but outputting numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 seconds, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 ticks, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 frames, and a frame length that decides how, how many, the, the steps of the frames, basically. So this is what we'll talk about, because it gives us uh, power to animate things in Bifrost Graph in a very elegant way. Let's briefly have a look at this page. It's the philosophy of space and time. We're interested in the philosophy of time and maybe you want to uh, study it. Here we have the Korean page for this. It's uh, an interesting topic because time is uh, sort of an absolute value. We have uh, the year so-and-so and, -so and uh, next year will be the the year so-and-so plus one etc. And the, we have a atom time which tells us the uh, time in milli and sub milliseconds etc but time is uh, quite delicate indeed because for example a stone doesn't care about time so time is uh, linked to us humans and not all of the time really to us humans because when we fall asleep for example we lose the imagination of time we lose this feeling of now it's uh, midday and lunchtime we just lose it when you get into your sleeping mode uh, all of a sudden you will sense that uh, things flow together and backwards and forwards and there's no time there and you lie there uh, flat on the bed for hours without experiencing any notion of time but this is a uh, it doesn't have to do with our time because this is a straightforward thing one second two seconds etc let me show you a few variations using that time node later on actually start with an empty scene and load this default boiling example in green into our viewport now i change the color from green to orange Actually, this might be your homework in case you want one. Locate the color in one of the nodes. And a hint, it's not in the obvious layer. It's somewhere hidden beneath. Quite interesting. And it took me maybe 10 minutes to find it. Now the time node sets in. I locate the fractal noise field node and feed the time in seconds into the frequency of the fractal noise field. Instead of controlling the frequency, I now let the time control the magnitude of the fractal noise field. And now the time ratio. The time output is, as I said, numbers like uh, 1 second, 2 seconds, 10 seconds, etc. Let me locate another node where I can connect the time to. For example, the node Iterative Display Points. We don't need to know anything about this node or explore the purpose of this node. We'll just drag the time into there and this is what we get. Yet another node, the node which creates the mesh plane where the boiling takes place. Let's open its dimension section and feed the time into the length. The time value increases step by step from one second to however long you play the animation. In most cases you've just seen, things get out of hand with this ever increasing number. But before we start taming the time node, and we can tame it, let me go back to the boiling example in its original state, actually to an empty scene. We go to Windows and the Bifrost browser because with 
deal with an example today which will modify. If you don't see this, the Bifrost browser here, you need to go to the settings preferences, the plugin manager and locate Bifrost and activate it. Uh, you find it under by typing in BIF or Bifrost or whatever. So let's open the Bifrost browser now. We have smoke, geometry things, etc. The scatter pack, fire, fields, and under fields we find the boiling noise, which is actually quite cool. I, I, I like it. Double click and it lands in the scene and we see a, quite a huge graph. And somewhere there is the, is the color. I won't change the color now. We we'll stick to the green, uh, which is visible here. If I deselect it, let me deselect it. Uh, I see this boiling movement. It goes on forever. And since it uh, is uh, based on a fractal noise, it will actually never be the same. So it will always be different. We obviously have a plane and the plane is being deformed by our Bifrost graph. Now the Bifrost graph, like many graphs really, has on the very left side the time node. It sits here. Actually we don't need the input, it's just sitting there. And you see that the time feeds its seconds into a scalar field, into a multiply node, uh, edit it's at the beginning and it basically influences all the nodes here, except for those ones. Actually, even those ones, yeah, this one, that one, until it's delivered to the output. Let us see that fractal noise field, that's the basic uh, creation node for the fractal noise. Well, obviously, we go uh, use the seconds and put them into the frequency. So the frequency will increase per second. And uh, you already see that it's quite different here. When we start at the beginning, the frequency obviously is a zero because the time is zero. Then it gets after one second, this is 25 frames, it gets one, uh, the frequency one, and then it increases. It increases basically forever and um, it's only limited by the resolution of our grid. Let's disconnect this. Let's select another node where we can feed the time in. And uh, one is, for example, the dimensions of the mesh plane. And I showed you the example uh, with the length and uh, we can feed it into the width. So same procedure as before, but now we see this structure it gets wider with time. And when we extend the frame range to say 500, it will get almost square. So the time controls the width of our surface nothing else in this case. Of course you can mix these things. If you leave this connection steady and for example go to frame and connect this to the length, frame is much more nervous than uh, seconds because frame we have 25 frames per second so we have um, a growth in length which is much faster. This is what I mean by the time easily gets out of hand. So let's disconnect this. Do we find some other thing? Well, the scale of the iterative displaced points. Uh, well, seconds go into the scale. easy to see this gets out of hand. 
even if you had a surface with a much higher resolution this would be not nice anymore actually it is quite nice but it's a more or less a piece of art let me stop here just for a second and create a light an area light in order to inspect this in in a rendering doesn't look that bad so this is what you get with this weird connection feeding the time in seconds into the scale of the iterative displays points node well if we want to tame our time this is what we do it's the f curve uh, let us uh, press the tab key and type in f curve and we find two options one is the f curve field this is what we have here but we'll need the evaluate f curve node so keep in mind evaluate f curve that's what you need it basically accepts as the input an, a value which it interprets as x it doesn't have to do anything with up and down or left or right it's just the x axis of a function and uh, this is the y output it's the y-axis of that function very easy to understand really if you connect the seconds into the x and the y into the magnitude of the fractal noise field then you can select the evaluate curve and here you see that curve it's a curve which steadily grows and then it stops let's have a look what this does and actually we can reduce the playback length now so the magnitude increases from zero and then it stays where it is this is what this curve tells us how about moving this point over here we start the animation and the animation at frame 1 already has a, a deformation whereas before it didn't and the deformation more or less stays the same let's go back to the F curve and do this we start very low we create a second point and we create a third point so we have this bell sort of structure with a value which is the amplitude of 1 so it should start with 0 get to an amplitude of 1 and then go back to 0 that's exactly what it does why so short well because this bell curve already stops here so when we select this point position it at instead of 1 at 10 we can press A in order to see the, the whole curve. It will start from 0 to a value of 1 and then go slowly back to a value of 0. Now let's change the F curve to a total, totally different um, shape. only the amplitude it goes back to zero then it peaks again then it, it does nothing for a while and then it comes up again and then it fades final thing about the F curve is this you can change the pre extrapolation and the post extrapolation before that and after this shape here uh, from constant to another mode for example cycle that means repetition or oscillate which means going back and forth
no problem feeding the same value, the Y value, into the frequency, as well as into the magnitude. Here's the same thing, taming the time node before it reaches the frequency input of the fractal noise field. In orange, you see the pulsating bubbles with different frequencies. The F curve in this case has a bell shape and oscillates continuously. Same situation with a more delicate F curve, like, like the one we've seen before doesn't resemble the bell curve anymore. And this is a final rendering, a turntable camera with depth of field. I fade the amplitude out using the F-curve. I rendered this in 1080 HD format, anti-aliasing set to 8 and the graphics card. The bottom line is Bifrost Graph is such a complex programming language which is so powerful, the performance is just amazing, that we need to get acquainted with it. And this is one aspect, using the time node and the F-curve. Have a nice day.